Although messy, solvents can help you gather information, including molded in stresses, variable orientation, reduced crystallinity, delamination, and degradation. Many different defects can result from exposure to solvents. Such fluids can also accelerate the failure of a part. For example, a test sample may take months to show crazing under stress conditions. Surprisingly, the surface of the same part may exhibit crazing in a matter of days or hours when the part surface is properly treated. Under controlled conditions, these such tests can be very helpful in determining the long-term performance of a part especially when used for comparison. Solvents can be applied in many ways. For example, you can soak them for 15 minutes, use an aerosol spray, or just wipe them down with a cloth. If the part is to be used as a salt in a solvent environment, stressing the part can often accelerate the solvent attack. A part may take months to blister when exposed to a solvent, but may blister in a matter of hours or days when bent, heated, or stressed in some way. Many injection molders assume that their regrind level is the same as their raw material. I've seen many injection molders who actually inventory their regrind and calculate the weight of this material as though it was virgin or raw material. The reason of this is primarily for accounting purposes. However, you should test the integrity of your regrind and make a management decision as to its usability and what amount of it is actually usable. When you test regrind, First, number one, mold the part using 100% virgin material. Number two, document processing parameters, in particular peak pressure and fill time. And number three, perform any important or relevant tests. This will give you a baseline for comparison when you test your regrind. This time you should then repeat these steps using your own regrind. If you can't use 100% regrind, then document the percentage that you do use. Lastly, determine the change in properties. Change divided by the original value times 100 would equal the percent change. So if you could not use 100% regrind, then divide the result by the fractional amount of regrind being used. For example, if your viscosity decreased 5%, but you used 50% regrind or 0.5 fraction, then 5% divided by 0.5 would result in a 10% change in properties. Ultimately, you should expect a decrease in properties of 10% or less. If you're encountering larger drops in, in uh, viscosity or the, or the part properties, you need to consider whether your process is causing excessive stress on the polymer during processing. Part performance should be of concern, and this is an issue that isn't spoken in any of the design guides that I've come across, but let me, let me give you some insight. You first want to test the properties of virgin material. Next, you want to test the properties of first-generation regrind. Here's what we suggest you do. Take raw material and then take a molded part and break up that part and measure the regrind of that broken up part and compare it to the percentages of property loss of the virgin material. That's a magic number. That number is going to tell you how much of a property loss, and obviously the, the less of a loss that you can achieve, the better. You'll note that materials that are unfilled will tend to show less of a property loss versus a filled material will show more of a property drop. 
So with that in mind, materials that are unfilled should show a property loss of less than 15%. Those that have some type of filler or loaded in some percentage, you want to look for numbers that are 20% or less.